Hello, and welcome to another tutorial. This time, we're going to be looking at node-based shader networks and how we can use them to achieve interesting effects in our games. Now, as you see here, I've got a industrial sci-fi looking ship here, and what we're going to be looking at is how to achieve the color scheme that we see on these parts. The functionality that we have is that we can change the color based on this picker that I have up here in the corner. So I can adjust the hue of the main color. I could make it, say, a dark cyan. And then I can adjust the hue of the secondary color. Make that maybe a bright purple. So if I look at the asset itself, you see that we have these two colors that we have decided. And if I look at their material, they are determined right here but then they also do a few other things. As you'll see, layered on top of the color is we still have the dirt, and this dirt is not affected by the underlying color, adding to the sense that the dirt was applied after the paint was, after it had been worn away. There's also, as you can see right here, some baked ambient occlusion layered again on top of the paint as well as some color variation across the paint itself. It's a little bit easier to see if I choose a warmer color. So if I choose something like this red, then you can see, especially here on the cockpit, that we have some orange and then it shifts a little into red. You can also see a little bit of that here on top of the fuselage so that the paint isn't all one uniform shade. There are very subtle variations that help break up the pattern. For this tutorial series, we are going to be starting in 3D Coat, moving on to Photoshop in order to combine our textures and create what are known as masks. And then ultimately, we're going to be going into Unity and using the plugin Shader Forge in order to create this node-based material. So let's begin. So we're starting here in 3D Coat. And what we need to do before we can start building any node-based material is that we need to understand exactly what the texturing requirements for that material are. So as you saw earlier, there's several things that this shader needs to accomplish. The first is that we need to have a base color for the bits of the material that are not painted. So that would be like this little connector, the back of this shielding, and anywhere where there isn't going to be paint. So that would be mostly the edges and wherever there's a lot of dirt. Next thing we need is that we need our base paint color. In this case, that's everywhere that's white. We need our secondary color, which is everywhere that's red. We need the dirt to be laid on top of the red, or on top of both paint colors actually. And then we also need a texture for manipulating the hue of our paint. That's going to be a noise material or texture. And then we also want to be able to overlay the ambient occlusion on top of that. Now here's what I mean when I say overlaying that on top of the rest of our material. The way this shader is going to work is that we are going to have a base color, which is going to be our model without any of the paint. And then we're going to be replacing the color of this texture map with whatever color we choose for the paint. However, when we do that, we are going to completely destroy the underlying color. So that would destroy the dirt because we have paint where there isn't dirt. The dirt is on top of the paint, not the other way around. And that would also destroy our ambient occlusion map because the ambient occlusion in this case, at least in 3D Coat, is overlaid on top of all of our other texture layers. So what's going to happen is that when we replace the diffuse map with our paint color, we're going to be overlaying it on top of that ambient occlusion. So we need to be able to apply the ambient occlusion separately, not as part of the base diffuse texture. So to achieve that, here's how I've organized 
the layers here in 3D Coat. And I'm going to do a little bit more texturing while I'm here just to show you some extra steps that are necessary in order to achieve some of this functionality. The first is that I have is that I have this as my color. I have a base texture layer here. I have some additional materials which is mainly things like copper or plastic that are laid on top of this. And then I have some dirt as its own layer and then I have my ambient occlusion layer. Hopefully you can see the ambient occlusion making it a little darker. Now I have my main paint and my accent paint, which is basically the secondary color, on their own layers. Now right here where I have all of this set up, since I know the material is always going to have paint applied to it, there are a few texture maps I can export right now. If I look at the text metal, without the paint on, then you see that our object is almost entirely metal. But I know in the final game that this is going to, that is not going to be the case. So with the main paint and accent paint layers applied here, I can already export the normal maps, the roughness maps, and the metalness maps because those aren't going to be affected by some of the other textures that we're going to be exporting out of here. So I'll go ahead and export those right now. I'll go up to textures, export, I'll start with the tangent space normal map. Call this one underscore n for normal. Now that fill, hold on, I'll talk about that when I export the next texture, which will be the roughness map. Underscore r. So what this option here is asking for is that there's a lot of empty space in our texture map. And what's going to happen when you hit yes here is that it adds a little bit of padding to the texture, which can help uh, fix any texture seams if there's a problem with the uh, UV layouts when you export the final OBJ file. Just a little explanation. Except in very specific cases, I almost always hit yes on this dialog. And then finally, I can export the metalness map. Underscore metal. All right, now it gets a little tricky. The first one I'm going to export is the diffuse map, which is basically just a fancy word for color. So I'm going to hide the two paint layers. And then I'm also going to hide the ambient occlusion. Remember. We don't want our ambient occlusion to be baked into our diffuse map. We want it to be its own texture so that we can lay it on top of everything once we've applied our paint. But we do want the dirt to be part of the diffuse map because what we're going to do is we're going to be masking out the paint layer based on the dirt layer. So we want the dirt to be part of the diffuse map even though later we will be exporting the dirt separately. So with all those layers turned off except for the base textures and a few of the additional color maps,